Hey everybody, this is Reverend Essie of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, New Birth Ministries, that is, and I'm, uh, I just want to, uh, come on and make sure I have my microphone on, right? Um, yeah, okay. Um, I just want to come on and, and do a, a small video about something that I noticed this morning. Um, it seems to me, and I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but people are getting very angry lately have you noticed that people seem to be getting very angry i remember about two or three weeks ago god showed me the word anger i i specifically remember when i woke up he showed me the word anger and i'm beginning to see that people are just i don't know getting upset easily upset there is so much going on i believe there is more of a virus going on than the coronavirus, COVID-19. There is a spiritual virus happening as well. And I remember years ago that I preached on um, uh, spiritual flus or something, spiritual colds years ago. It was something like, do you have, have you ever had or do you have a spiritual flu? And everything that happens in the natural has to have happened in the spiritual first, amen? happens in the spiritual and uh, I believe there is a spiritual virus going around and you can almost see the evil spirits that are using people that are just cutting each other and fussing and fighting and yelling I had somebody come on uh, my uh, Facebook page um, earlier this morning and um, they just kept wanting to argue and that you could tell they wanted to start and argue about abortion and things like that and anybody in their right mind who is christian knows good and well you don't vote for somebody i don't care if it's democrat republic or whatever those other names are that they use right you don't go against murder and now we know we do know okay anybody in their right mind would know that there are times when a woman has to um i hate to say it this way but you know get rid of the baby because there's there's problems there they've had a problem a physical problem or the baby has already passed or something else is wrong okay i, I believe they call it dnc or whatever you know but uh, what I, if anybody would think anybody who is in a right mind and, and has a godly heart would know that People who are talking about stop killing babies and stop abortion, we're talking about um, vanity. People who get rid of babies because um, they don't want to lose their body or they're not in a mood to raise a child or, you know, for vanity reasons, not for necessity. There are some things that are necessary. But then you have those people that get on just, I, you know, and I think this one person that was that was carrying on a conversation with me, I was trying to keep it as light and godly as I could, right? Okay, because when you go by the Bible, you can't be wrong. Amen? When you go by the Bible, you can't be wrong. And I was trying to be as light and godly as I could be on, on, this, on this subject that we were talking about. And he just kept coming. What? And that's another thing. What is up with all these men bashing women online? I, have you noticed it? I don't know if you noticed it or not, but I have. It is so weird how, and it's not like the women are bashing. I've seen less women bashing women than I've seen men bashing women. And he just kept coming on like he wanted to argue. And I was trying to let him know. I mean, he was arguing about judging. And, and we know that the Bible says we're going to even judge angels one day. People use that don't judge me sentence as a crutch. That doesn't mean that you can live any way you want to live. Amen. So we, so that I had to end that argument. I had to give him word that he couldn't argue with. And in fact, it was the last thing I said to him was, um, uh, God lives in us, right? God, our body is the temple. God lives in us. And with God in you, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. And you can't argue with that. God does what he wants to do whenever he gets ready. So, and then I noticed something else too online today. I'm just bringing some things to you real quick in this, in this video. I noticed also that AI, I've been on artificial intelligence for some reason. God's been bringing it to me for a reason. And I've noticed that artificial intelligence on Facebook is bringing up conversations one right after another. You see one post and it deals with something and then another post will have the same color or the same picture, so to speak. It, it, it's, it's, um, it, let's say you're talking about abortion, okay? 
one topic will be about abortion going down your timeline. And the very next one underneath it is about, um, it will show a picture of a baby's head in some clamps. Okay, and that's like a bloody baby's head and some clamps. And then the one underneath it is, you know, um, Joe Biden. And the next one underneath it is, you know, um, the debate or something. And, and, and some of this AI is just causing people to argue. I am saying this to you right now, and I feel it in my spirit. And I know God is right. But watch out for AI, too. Watch out for those computers and those platforms because that artificial intelligence is causing people to argue. And just when you think you're done with one argument, right, and you set that argument aside, you go back to your timeline and that same topic is on your timeline four or five more times. Be very, you know, like the cartoon used to say, be very, very careful, okay? Be very careful because something's wrong. Something is wrong. Amen. You can't fall for every post that you see and, and know when to end it. No, stop it before it becomes an, an argument and you make yourself look bad. So the best thing you can do when somebody's arguing with you is um, give them word. Give them word because they can argue with you. They can argue with the flesh, but they can't argue with the word. Amen. Know your word. You have to study the word and know your word to give the word. Amen. So um, that's all I really wanted to say. Uh, that I, I had to make a video. My, my mic wasn't working for a while. As you see, I had to do some taping up. and It's, it's new. It's just the way that I have it in this uh, arm that I use for, for it. Um, but y'all got this. So look at this mic. Okay. Y'all got me this. I don't know if you could see, yeah, you could see it, but, um, yeah, I had to do some work on it. <laughs> I can't get it, but, uh, but it wasn't working for a while. That's another thing too. Ah, uh, yeah. That's another thing I want to bring up before I go. Um, uh, also pray for, I've been noticing this too, and I just want to bring it up to you guys that, that watch me. Okay. Cause I noticed I'm not like extremely famous with a whole bunch of people, but there are some of you who do like what I do, and I appreciate you very, very much, and I love you. But also pray for the invasion of the prophet's um, voice. I've been noticing that as well, too. At first, I thought it was just one certain prophet because he's really, really good. I thought it was just him, but I'm beginning to notice it wasn't just Prophet Tracy Cook. I notice when he gets ready to prophesy, he's awesome. And he calls out people's names and addresses and, and conditions of your body and things like that. And I noticed every time I try to watch him, the sound goes out or something really weird happens to the sound. Okay, the devil does not want you to hear what God's prophets have to say. And I'm going to call out another lady that I love very much. And I even lived with her when I was younger. And her family, uh, the, the Jemison family from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, I'm calling them out because they was good to me. They gave me a place to stay when I was young and dumb and, and, and didn't know where I was going in life, right? And they really, I, I went to their their grandfather's church, uh, Bethlehem Temple in Pittsburgh and East Liberty, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Pittsburgh. And um, boy, I had a wonderful time with those people. But Terry, the oldest one, pastor, I think, apostle. She goes by Apostle Terry. Um, Lord, I said it too quick and I can't think of her last name. I'm used to Jemison um, and Faye Jemison's her mom. But she put something on Facebook uh, yesterday. Today's what? Um, Tuesday, October 20th, 2020. She did a beautiful prayer gathering on Facebook yesterday and went back. And Facebook removed her prayer the entire session. Facebook is beginning to remove Christian content. I am in, um, I moderate a group. Actually, I moderate a few groups, in fact. And more. But anywho, um, I moderate a lot of groups. And, and uh, this one group that I'm in... Uh, they don't realize it, but they are actually hindering the word of God. Uh, but then again, here's my question. They don't want any Christian content in this group, right? Okay. And at first I was kind of, um, ups well, not upset, but kind of, I was shocked. But then again, here's, here's the, here's the catch, right? If you allow and you if you allow Christians in your group unless it's specifically for a, for Christians 
If you allow Christian content in your group, what happens when witches want to start posting their content? Amen. And I thought about that. Where'd my mouse go? There you go. And I thought about that and I was like, oh, so see, sometimes when these groups don't want you to post Christian content, they're not being mean. And it could just be because they're Christians and they don't want that other junk in there because, you know, we, we're living in um, uh, all inclusion. We're living in the all inclusion era. No matter what you have, you have to include everybody in on it, right? So be careful judging Christian groups, too, because they're not. I think a lot of them are not doing it to be smart. They don't want that mess to come with it because they figure, you know, witches are, you know, if you do something, why can't we do it too? You know, next thing you know, they're storming outside of a courthouse or something somewhere trying to get their, their rights to, to witch, to be witches, to put, put witchcraft on everybody. But doesn't the Bible say no weapon formed against us shall prosper? And all that rises up against us shall fall. Amen. Uh, how's that song go? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. All that rise up against me shall fall. I will not care what the devil may bring me. I am a child of God. Amen. And you say that too. Every morning you get up, you say, thank you, Lord, for a new day. The Father and I are one. I am the righteousness of God. Amen. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And all that rises up against me shall fall. So that's all I want to say. I love you. God bless you. Have a good day. And thanks for listening. And I'll see you Sunday. Um, I come on um, Blog Talk Radio on Sundays at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Rev Essie. That's R-E-V-E-S-S-I-E. Or you can dial 1-917-889-8054 at 10 a.m. EST. <laughs> and you just sit at home, just sit at home and chill with a glass of pop or your coffee or tea or something, right? And just listen to the word. I try to keep it. I'm usually under 40 minutes. Thir- I try to go 30 to 40 minutes. I used to try to go an hour because of that religious thing. You know, you're supposed to go an hour, you know, but, no, you know, in these days and times, people's um, thought processes are shorter and you got to hit it. You got to hit it and quit it. You got to hit it with the word. You got to know what you're talking about. Go by the word, fill people with the word, invite them to Jesus and call it a day. Amen. This is not a talent contest. <laughs> Amen. So I tried about 40 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. It all depends on what my, con- my content that I, you know, I, either my notes or something that I go by. And um, so you're welcome to come on. Reverend Essie signing off. I love you. God bless you.